that the Europe uh, supports us, both politically, economically, and in other ways. But, but then you said that uh, they, they, sorry. Um, Do you want to say no, 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 no. I mean, it's pre-taxes because they can have free taxes. It must be fine. Feel free to express yourself. As I said, you said that the Europe is not with us. But then you said that they, there are lots of European state, uh, nations that need to vote for some for things that you have for the Yes. Yes, you are in negotiation with them. You're trying to convince them. You don't negotiate. Discuss. You, you discuss, I'm sorry. No, no, for that, but for this. <laughs> <laughs> My question is, how does uh, Europe stand with us and support us when uh, you said that uh, you have that conversations, they need to pass laws? As I understand from the presentation you saw of us, that must be the location resettlement, and this uh, must uh, happen through cooperation from the Europe. But I got the idea from what you said that Europe is in a divided Can I clarify one thing here because yes, I, yes. I, I got the point of your question. Let me tell you that the agreement between the United States that took place last September as a decision is a matter for all the United States. Four member states did not agree. They are saying the decision was made uh, at qualified majority. But according to the treaty, it is mandatory. They have to respect what was decided then. So it's very clear. We do not negotiate with them. We tell them to do what you are supposed to do. As far as Europe is concerned, as I explained before, and I'm sure you have already you know it because you study. The European Union is not a federal system. There's no central government. I'm a member of, let's say, the government of Europe, in charge of all these things. But I am not as flexible as when I was minister in the Greek government. The decision was made at the central level, with the government of policy. The minister had to implement it. Now, my job is to convince all member states and finally reach an agreement that all of them must implement. And I can tell you, it is not a very easy thing. It's a very complicated thing. Because of what we said before. Because there are some governments in Europe, they, they do not think and act in a European way. So once when I was asked a question on BBC, I think I said again, I would, I would tell them, ask your people. Do they want to be in the European Union or not? From the moment you are there, you have commitments. And you must respect and implement what we all have decided together in a joint way. And this is not negotiable, I would say. Otherwise, we shall start making concessions and we shall become accountable in the future in case the European project collapses. And when I said it, you said it again, that uh, I said, how can we? Defend and protect the young generations. No, I didn't say that exactly to your, to your colleague. I said how you, as young people, can defend the European project by not letting all these ideas to be fostered among you. You understand what I mean? This is what I want to say. Sorry? I didn't say that. No, no, let me start with your question. You said. Let me be frank with you. I interpreted what you said in my own way to illustrate what they want to say. All right, and now the last one. Let's see what they like. Uh, all right. And one more, uh, and one more from that part. All right. That's not fair, right? It's not neglected. In terms of inclusiveness. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned inclusiveness before. <coughs> How do we assimilate and integrate the refugees if they were to stay in uh, Europe and not go back to where they came from? That's the first question. And the second question is in terms of church and state. How can you have them understand the concept of church and state, the separation of church oh, and state? Oh, see, see. The separation of church and state. Oh, church, church. Ah, church and state. Yeah. Yeah. I have a New York accent, so I apologize. Well, so the separation of the 
church and state. So the first question is, in terms of inclusion, is how do we assimilate and help them integrate into the European uh, nation and integrate, not assimilate. Okay, integrate. And the second question is, how can we help them understand the concept, if it's a problem, the concept of separation of church and state? You mean faith, not church? Church is an institution. Well, states, we have the separation of the government and the... Yes, that's another thing. It has to do with how uh, the, the national systems uh, are organized. Uh, different in Greece, different in Italy, different in the other. But it's not there the problem. It's not there. We do not talk about inter-institutional relations or conflicts within the national systems. It's another issue. But I can tell you about the immigration. First of all, let me be very clear that. The refugee who is coming here, I explained it all. Is that it? My God. He will be given to be granted shelter, support, decent way of life, etc. And he can be here and uh, held this status of refugee as long as his country is in war. As soon as stability goes, comes back to Syria, and we must exhaust all means in order to find a political solution for that, and there are many incidents that can be undertaken recently, then the statue of the refugee does not exist anymore. They will have to go back to the refugee. He's a citizen. No, no, he doesn't take it. Well. No, no. A, a refugee. Uh, unless, unless he uh, applies for it. And then it's up to the, the state to recognize him as a citizen or not. But that's another thing. That's another thing. For the moment, what we all do and we must do is to provide these people with our support, with our help, with protection in an environment of safety, to take care of their children, to provide them, as you asked me before, education. And this is what they're doing right now. They have set up schools. They have set up uh, medical centers. And they have approximately 3 million people. And this is what Greece must do for this number of 25,000 people that will stay here for a long period. It is the quarter, the participation of Greece in uh, taking its share, all along with other member states of the European Union. But citizenship, which is also a part of, uh, of my confidence in the European Union, um, uh, has nothing to do with. <coughs> To become a citizen, it is a totally different uh, procedure to follow for the moment. We know what these people need. As far as the others, the regular migrants, I explained to all uh, what is the position and the decision taken by the European Union. Uh, now, as far as church and state is concerned, um, we can talk about this when I come back to national politics. <laughs> <laughs> now, the real last one, from that side of the room, please. Hello. Uh, you referred before about uh, the groups from. You referred to, uh, before about the groups of people from Morocco that they prefer that they are in the uh, domain in the Greek borders. This is very interesting because Morocco is very uh, Morocco is closer to Spain uh, than to Greece, and then uh, but they. Re they choose to travel all around uh, uh, Sahara, uh, Africa, and cross uh, Turkey Greek borders. Does that imply uh, a lack of security measures in a, GN, in a GNC that um, with these security, this security measures the Spanish have already taken them? Well, well now. can uh, uh, I give you an off the record answer to that? <laughs> Absolutely. Will you respect it? Will you respect it? Not you, all of us. So, Please, tell the camera. 